Good afternoon, good morning, good night, wherever you are. This is Paul with the Real Estate Playbook joining you for another episode. Thank you for tuning in. We are on Zoom today. Um, I have a very special guest. Her name is Brooke Overton. How are you, Brooke? Good. How are you, Paul? Doing pretty well. Thank you for asking. Good. Good to see you. Um, I know you have a lot of. Thank you very much. I know you have a lot of big things going on right now, so I appreciate you making the time for this. You're a very busy woman. Absolutely. uh, (laughs) Busy is good. That it is. That it is. Yes. So, Brooke, I've known you for a little while. Um, For the people out there that are listening that don't know who Brooke Overton is, could you tell us how you got your start in real estate and kind of how you got to where you are today? Yeah. So uh, after high school, I got my degree in pharmacology and toxicology um, at University at Buffalo. Came down to Florida, Sunshine State, Paradise. There's no pharmacology and toxicology jobs. Um, (laughs) So why I got into that was I really wanted to help on the drug research front. Found out that there's none of that down here, but there was a need for people to advocate strongly for them when they're trying to buy a house. And um, I I found that that is my passion more than anything. When I bought my house four years ago, it changed my life. And I love helping buyers buy their first home or second or third and helping sellers get where they need to go. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, Brooke. Um, And I know you've had quite a bit of success recently. So congratulations to you for that. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, I think I've heard this story from you before about when you bought your house. Was it with Arlena or am I mistaken in that? It was with Arlena and I was just so wowed. Um, Arlena's been at 54 now for five years. I actually grew up with her. Um, She was seven. I was nine when we met up in upstate (laughs) New York. Our kids are a week apart. So um, when I was in a rental situation where they were going to increase my rent like $300 and she was like, you do not have to deal with this. And I was like, wait a second, what do you mean? You know, I had never been taught through all my years of education, the importance of owning a home. I was never taught about equity. And she was like, she really opened my eyes to that. She, um, you know, held my hand through the whole process. I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. Um, she helped us with a VA loan for my, my husband. And, uh, I mean, we bought our house with $2,000, uh, closing Ooh. costs, everything. Yeah. And since then, in four years, my home values doubled. It's it's changed my life. And um, just seeing how impactful that was, I was like, I want to do that someday. I want to help somebody else, you know, um, because I was so naive to the whole concept. She opened my eyes and, and helped me build generational wealth, you know, so. That's amazing. Sounds like yeah. a great friend, first of all. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's like my sister. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. So um, you mentioned she's been here for a while. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to ask you, did how was it having like such a, an accomplished person as a friend yeah. uh, who's already been doing this for a while? Did that kind of help you when we were, you were getting your real estate career started? Absolutely. So I started at a different brokerage um, and there was no leads, nothing like that. No real training, nothing like that. And then she popped over to 54 and I was like, why did you leave me? I just started, you know, and, and she was like, no, listen, there's so much more opportunity. Rose and Joe, they've built an incredible team. Like this is where you want to be. Um, and I was just like, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to rise up to their standards. Um, I've been a stay at home mom for like six years. Um, My kids keep me extremely busy. And I I was just worried that I wasn't going to be able to perform at the level that they, you know, need you to perform at. And uh, my husband went through a job change, which kind of made me say, okay, let's go, you know, two, two feet in, let's jump in. And, um, right away I was pending deals and she helped me mentored me through, you know, my first six months. And still she's my team lead now. Thank, thankfully, I just, I just love her. And I mean, she would spend hours on the phone with me, every conversation, every contract. Um, so that really helped me start off and, um, pick up the trade like so quickly and be able to succeed and yeah it's it's awesome well that's amazing you're definitely a a success story thank you yeah and speaking of uh your husband i i know josh has recently made the move over to the the team as well is that right absolutely yeah Mm -hmm. yeah he's He's doing great yeah yeah (laughs) he's doing great and it's 
it's really nice not having a nine to five. Um, we get, you know, more time with our girls and um, we're able to take them to Disney more and do more things, more vacations, work from, we call them staycations sometimes too. We are in Florida touring something, but we're still working, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So it, it's nice because parenting is always working and so is real estate and you just put them together and it just makes you a very proactive agent when you know you're used to being so proactive for your kids so mm -hmm. well i love that it sounds like you guys have a lot of flexibility and that's rare yeah. for a lot of people so yeah for sure it's nice mm -hmm. that's awesome so brooke i wanted to talk to you a little bit about the um the market because it's changing right now quite a bit. Um, people are used to seeing kind of the same things for the past two years or so. It was a very intense seller's market. Yeah. Um, and I try to keep up with these things, but I, I love to get the perspective from the agents who see it every day. So could you talk a little bit about how it is kind of changing and how you yeah. are adapting with your your business? Absolutely. So, um, you know, about two months ago when the rates started to increase, increase, increase and really jump, um, you know, it's it's softened the market um, nicely, honestly, at the five hundred to eight hundred thousand dollar price point. It's pretty much a balanced market. You know, you don't you don't unless there's a pool home, you don't have multiple offers, uh, two days going pending or four hours, you know, it's a nice time for buyers to be able to get into homes because rates, they were just cheap for a couple of years during the pandemic, but rates are actually normalized. They're not high, you know, um, high is eight, nine, 10%. You know, when I bought my house four years ago, my rate was six and a quarter and I was happy with that. Um, so um, you can always refinance when they go down, but it has slowed the market a, a a little bit softened. I wouldn't say slowed really just softened. And it gives you an opportunity. If you've been looking for a year, six months, you know, you're getting outbid 20, 30 times. This is a great time for you to be able to buy a house. Um, I've been able to make great connections with listing agents and see how many offers do you have? Do you have any offers? We're on day four or five. Is there anything that is on the table? And sellers, they're so used to this, like, just rampant market that they get extremely antsy when it's day three and there's no offer on the table, you know? Yeah. So it's a great opportunity for you to put a nice full price offer, but ask for seller concessions. Um, a $500,000 house, you can ask for $10,000 in seller concessions. You take that 10,000, you buy two points you're getting your rate down half a percentage, you know? So now your rate is what it was a couple months ago, but you're not beating and competing against 10, 12, 20 other offers. So you're getting, you're able to keep your nice seven day inspection. You know, you're able to keep your finance contingency, maybe even all 30 days, you know? Um, appraisal contingency is not something I would still throw on there. You know, I don't think we're in a market for that yet, but um, you're not having to put appraisal gaps as much as often on there because you're not competing against so many people. So I finally got my great friends under contract that we'd been looking for well over six months. We've got outbid dozens of times on uh, pool homes in the five to $800,000 range. And it was all for a reason because we found them their dream home. We didn't have to go over list price. We didn't have to go crazy with anything. And um, at the same time, I just listed their home two days ago. Um, it's, it's under contract, you know, and we didn't have 12 contracts, but we had a good contract. So I think it's a nice balance. Um, it's really nice balance. Great time to buy a house, still a great time to sell a house as well. Well, that's really encouraging to see things yeah. sort of shift into a more reasonable place. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, the rates being 6% I and mean, the rate on renting is a hundred percent. So the worst thing I see some people do is they get scared. The market's crashing. The sky is falling. It's not happening. You know, um, waiting, paying 12 months of your landlord's mortgage to then be ready to buy, to pay a higher interest rate, you know, within 12 months is not the best financial decision. It's really not. Um, investing in yourself and paying for your own home is always going to give you the most financial freedom. That's awesome. I definitely yeah. agree. I'm currently renting myself and I cannot yeah. wait for my lease to be up. So. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, so what do you say to people who are still intimidated, Brooke? Like what kind of options do you present to them? Um, because people are, like I said, are so used to this crazy seller's market. Yeah. What kinds of things do you say to them to be kind of encouraging? Yeah. So I tell them that, you know, in the last couple of weeks, especially it has softened greatly. Um, we're not exactly sure what the fall holds or what the winter holds, but sure. that right now, I would love to help your, you every step of the way, hold your hand through the whole process, the pre-approval process, you know, trying to buy down your rate, get your payment where you want it to be. We have more ways to protect your money right now than we did two months ago, even though rates were cheaper then. I can actually protect your money more now than I ever could two months ago. Um, I always obviously put my clients money first time second as if their money is my own. However, I can put more contingencies on there now that are like a double triple check than I ever could in the past two, two years really. So it's a great time to buy a house. That's, That's for awesome. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've talked to some other agents and I'm wondering your opinion on this, uh, mm -hmm. for people that they hear all that and they're still maybe not in the best financial position. Yeah. Do you have any experience with like these rent to own programs at all? Have you seen any clients take advantage of that? Um, I've seen, um, I've seen a couple of them and then I know that there's some sellers that are willing to rent to own as well and mm. do seller financing. Um, also, the Hometown Heroes program is really nice. You can buy a house now with almost, you know, just an escrow deposit, really, because they're, yeah. they will cover up to $25,000 of your closing cost down payment. And it really provides a great opportunity for our heroes, our, our soldiers, our teachers, um, our, our nurses, you know, all of the people, especially that have been hugely impacted by the pandemic that have worked and worked and worked through very strenuous conditions um, is a nice reward for them to have home ownership. You know, yeah. when I see Wall Street and all of these corporations buying up all of these homes, you know, there's a reason they're doing that, you know, and that's to rent them back out to to us for you know as home values increase rents increase so um their goal is to make us a nation of renters you know and my goal is to is to fight that well that's that's great to hear brooke because i completely yeah. agree with you on that point <laughs> yeah for sure yeah so brooke that's all really good information i hope people take advantage of that i think yeah. the the media tends to sensationalize things but it's good to hear yeah. from someone who's boots on the ground you know Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Brooke, to shift a little bit and kind of talk about you, because I know um, you've been pretty successful in your career. What would you say has been your biggest strength that's contributed to your success so far? So I think my biggest strength is my biggest weakness sometimes. <laughs> so I'm very passionate and I about what I do. And I, I don't ever quit. You know, I don't take no for an answer. It, if you know, something's denied or um, I'm told, you know, my FHA offer doesn't compare with the 24 other offers that are on the table. I'm going to fight for that client. I have one, you know, uh, I have won one really recently in uh, a brutal bidding war that was FHA and, um, you know, and they are, they've tried for over a year to get a home. So wow. it was, it was, I will keep advocating for my client. I take them under my wing the first time I meet them. And until we have keys at the closing table, that's when I quit. Um, sometimes that can be my biggest weakness because I sincerely care about my clients like their family, you know? Um, so uh, sometimes this business can be, um, you know, challenging. And um, my sometimes I'm not a very patient person. Um, so I think that is my biggest weakness. However, not being patient helps me achieve, you know, and be proactive and um, achieve what I need to for my buyers and sellers. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you, you also answered my next question, which is what, <laughs> what is your yeah. biggest weakness? But yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, um, absolutely. I, I do think that's, that's, um, that's a great strength to have, Brooke, is being persistent. And I know a lot of clients will probably seek that in an agent, somebody who's willing to go for go to bat for them. Yeah, so absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's yeah. benefited you and your clients quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It has. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, Brooke, uh, a different question for you, a different angle here. If you hadn't chosen real estate as your career long term, what might you see yourself doing otherwise? Um, I would go with pharmacology and drug research. Um, I the way that children's diseases are treated with adult medicines um, impacts my life because of my children, you know, right. and what they go through. And it's really a money thing of why there's not more research done for medicine for children's diseases, because children are not just little adults, their brains are different, everything is different, their nervous system, their immune system, that's all different, you know, so that was, you know, how I started was like, I, I want to help make a difference in that area. That was before my kids were even born, you know, and, and uh, go through what they're going through. Um, but I, I find it um, hard to understand how there's, there's so many medicines to treat adult diseases, um, but children are left on the back burner, you know, and there's no excuse for that because our children are our future and they need to be invested in. And, um, you know, it's not that not with this healthcare system, it doesn't work very well. So mm -hmm. truly, well, that's yeah. something I, I, I never knew about Brooke. So it's interesting yeah. to hear. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And you seem to be very passionate about it, which I can understand. And yeah. like you said earlier, you, you're kind of a passionate person. And I'm sure that that shows yeah. to your clients and yeah, for career. sure. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, we kind of blew through our questions here pretty quickly, Brooke, but yeah. I appreciate you coming on. Let me say that before I get to the last one. Absolutely. That's my pleasure, Paul. Always Love fun to, to talk to you. Likewise, likewise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the very last question, Brooke, we always end with this. Um, there's a lot of new agents out there. There are agents that might be struggling in this market. Yeah. Everybody's been there, right? Mm -hmm. So if you could provide them with some advice, what would your mm -hmm. advice be? So the most important thing you can do as a new agent is to join a brokerage that cares about you. Um, I say it all the time. I'm like walking like 54 billboard, but like 54 changed my life. You know, the way that they invest in new agents, the way that they care, that they give leads, you know, that are free of charge, you know, and the way that that expands your business, all of my bigger listings have been off of these Zillow leads, these opportunities to have million dollar listings that I would, I don't know people personally, you know, with millions of dollars like that. So the way that I've been able to meet people and now be friends with, uh, you know, uh, high end clients like that, I would never have those opportunities without 54. And I'm, I'm pretty, um, you know, blunt about saying that and honest about that. Um, I've had so many opportunities at 54. I'm so grateful for, um, and they have helped train and also create this culture of caring and of about how to advocate for your clients. Um, they're motivational and just the, the vision that Rose and Joe have had for our brokerage it plays out in the culture that 54 is. And um, I wouldn't be where I'm at without 54, that's for sure. So I think when you're looking for a brokerage, if they're not investing in you, um, then you don't need to be partnered with them, you know, so. Yeah, absolutely. I, I completely agree, Brooke. And I think you're you're yeah. definitely a 54 Realty Success story, so. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I'm very absolutely. grateful, super humble and very grateful, yes. Well, it shows for sure. So agents out there, if you're listening, don't jump on the first opportunity you see. <laughs> yes, for sure. Definitely. I wasted a year doing that. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, definitely interview around and ask a lot of questions and yeah. find the right place for you. And hey, it might be here with us. Who knows? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It probably is, right? Yes, it is. I know. I interviewed a lot of different brokerages and um, I, you know, it's funny. I get a call probably once a week trying, people trying to recruit me and I just tell them, I'm married. I'm sorry. Taken. <laughs> so. In more ways than one. Yes. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> well, awesome, Brooke. Thanks again for coming on. I really, really appreciate it. I think this is some great advice for people to hear. Absolutely. Um, is there anything that you want to promote social media or anything like that? 
Um, you know, I got to work on my technology skills, Paul. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Thank God That's I have right. a great, great team at 54 um, to help me with that. You know, um, <laughs> 10 years ago is when I graduated college and it's all different now. So, um, yeah, our marketing team is great and I rely a lot on them for that. And uh, <laughs> I gather ideas from, from my girls that we, you know, that I work with and they help a lot with that. They taught me how to TikTok. So watch out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, watch I out, know. Y'all. I know. I feel like I just mastered a new language. Um, <laughs> I can almost Instagram like I'm, I'm about there. But my Facebook game is real strong. So I have a heavy um, Facebook social media presence. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. Right Other on. than that, 54 has such a uh, such a huge social media presence and um, such a big just internet presence in general that um if that's one of your weaknesses like mine, that you don't have to worry about that. So <laughs> you're absolutely right. There's a, a team of gurus working behind the scenes absolutely. to make that happen. <laughs> and they're amazing. Yeah. They create the uh, just beautiful marketing posts. And, and then I can just copy, paste, put my own what I want to say, but I don't have to figure out like, how do you get the open house to just flash across the page and now it's running across the page like how do you yeah. do that you know i don't know how to do that so <laughs> yeah they do that and that's great and it and it really does help um move listings fast so you're absolutely right and i i appreciate the words of appreciation i'm sure the yeah. marketing team oh, does as well <laughs> so, so much couldn't do it without them that's for sure awesome well brooke thanks again for coming on today i know you're busy and it's a weekend but yeah. i appreciate you Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me, Paul. I appreciate you. And no good to problem. see you. Likewise, even yeah. though it is virtual. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. I, I, I couldn't make it up there fast enough. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Like I said, the crazy, crazy schedule you have. For um, sure. Yes. Yeah. I'm here. I have probably like five appointments today and I'm heading down to Fort Myers today. So woo. yeah. Yeah. Try and make some time for yourself, Brooke. Yeah, absolutely. Tonight. <laughs> mm -hmm. There you go. Yep. Thank you. Everybody, no problem. Everybody out there, thanks for listening. You know the drill. Follow us on social media. Subscribe on YouTube. Yada, yada, yada. All the links are in the description. Have yourself a wonderful week, and we'll see you on the next one. Take care.